Hi everyone, this is Mike89. Welcome to the tenth video in my Sonic 3 and Knuckles with Knuckles tutorial series. Uh, this video is going to cover Lava Reef and Hidden Palace if you can call out a stage as well. So let's get started. Uh, so first things first, you want to do a small jump just from about where the second ring is in this set of three. Uh, and that gets you neatly through this gap here. Uh, next thing, wait for this gap to open up. Jump, glide onto this platform here so that the first step below the level of the ground you're currently on and then one tap spin dash away and what that'll do it gets you neatly under that plat under that spike over that one but still lands you before this enemy and then jump as soon as you hit the ground uh, if you don't do that then if you do a spin dash that's too heavy you land on it and then bounce away and then this um this drill doesn't actually start drilling until you hit the ground. Uh, so now move kind of over to where I am now. Uh, you can see just here the amount of uh, ground that actually falls away. Uh, as long as you're standing anywhere there, it's fine. Uh, so let so charge the spin dash until the platform falls away. Uh, then make sure you let go of down so that you'll release the spin dash immediately when you land and then as soon as you land down here, jump and glide away. Uh, this next uh, lava section here. So if you've done everything right up to this point, uh, this cycle of lava is just about to stop. So just delay yourself a little bit and just wait for it to pass and then go through. Okay, so now in this section, ideally you actually want to get a high jump off this floor, but it's actually really difficult to see exactly where you should jump because the um, the angles that you see on the ground of the rocks and things are not actually um, where the slopes are. So you can see it kind of looks like I should get a good angle off that there, but really what happens is I only get a very small jump that only clears one stair. So I'm actually jumping off a bit of a downslope. Uh, it's not immediately obvious exactly where you should jump from, but it actually didn't matter in this case because what you want to do, jump, glide, and clear two stairs like this. And then at 30 seconds, you can see the time is at 30, um, these two lava falls open up. So I actually had just enough time to glide over to the other side before the lava started falling again and then charge a spin dash from there. Uh, that I actually messed up a little bit. Uh, you can see on these crusher blocks that the spikes in the middle are actually set slightly lower than the spikes on the edges. So even when it looks like you can beat the spikes on the edges, you have to wait just a little bit longer so that the spikes in the middle don't get you. So spin dash here, spin dash back the other way. Again, jump and glide, land on the other side of this rock, give yourself a bit of room, charge a full spin dash, and jump away, and you should clear both of these spike balls here. Uh, then the trick is to jump from about where this rock is, or maybe just after it, and you want to go through that first enemy there and bounce off the second one and that gets you over those spikes and actually clears most of the most dangerous stuff in this area. Uh, if that if that cloud there happens to get you, or any of the clouds for that matter, uh, you need to spin dash off them immediately because it'll slow you right down and it'll actually drain your rings as well and if you happen to have just been hit and you've got zero rings it will kill you. So have to be really careful around that. Climb up to that gap there uh, now these, th um, these three narrow corridors are kind of tricky because again um, you want to make sure that you jump in them to maintain your spin dash momentum. So you actually want to jump a little bit earlier than what I did here uh, so it's just as you go through this last wall and that should bounce you into the ceiling and keep most of your momentum and also stop you from getting stuck about here. Uh, and this one, same deal, jump from about here, jump, puts you into the ceiling, carry your momentum, don't get stopped here. 
third one's kind of the same, but then after that, uh, I actually messed up this jump slightly. What you want to do is get, again, a bit of a jump off an upslope so you go straight into that invincibility. And then when you spin dash away, make sure that you have enough speed to actually get straight onto this platform and then jump immediately off it. So I've had to recover this a little bit. And you, you would end up landing right next to that red spring and then you just jump and glide, land on it, and then this is the same. Uh, so now off we go to the boss. So, the objective here is to try and uh, jump from the right positions on the ground, and uh, so this actually qu shows quite neatly where the good positions are. So the first one was just here, jump from that tiny little slope and that gives you a nice angle up into the arm there and then when moving right the angle is about there gotta jump from about there and that actually gets you enough enough height out of your jump to um, reach them at the top because normally on on regular height jumps you can't reach the top obviously so you need to be doing it with fast speed that way. Um, so if you don't get enough hits to um, destroy both of them, that's that's fine because so at the moment I only have one left on that left arm and I can pick it up as soon as it comes back. Uh, now you want to move over to this rock here. Uh, underneath this rock is a fire shield and we're gonna pick that up immediately after this boss fight. Uh, the signpost actually spawns from where you actually got the last hit on the boss. So if we stand here, then that's where the that's where the signpost will spawn, and we don't have to waste any time knocking the signpost over to here. So move over to there and wait for it to bob up two, three, four times. As it bobs down for the fourth time, then it stops. As soon as that happens full jump immediately like that and then just bounce on it for three hits uh, don't hold your jump when you do that so hold the jump all the way up but then let it go because uh, otherwise you'll bounce up too high and you won't actually get all three hits uh, get any remaining hits you need on the arms and then again one two three four jump two three uh, now, as for this, uh, it is possible, but very difficult, for Knuckles to get stuck under that um, fire shield the same way that Tails would. And if he does that, he can skip the entirety of Act 2. But I haven't shown this because A, it's really hard to get, and um, you, don't, you would never expect to get it in a run. And 2, it actually lets you... It lets me show off um, what Act 2 actually looks like if you don't get it, which is going to be most of the time. Almost all of the time, in fact. So this stage is actually mostly pretty self-explanatory, but having the fire shield is crucial. Now, important to note that these uh, rotating spike chains are are actually on the universal timer starting from Act 1. So the fact that I'm at 7 seconds right now tells me nothing about where they are. So if you are not exactly sure where these spike chains are going to be, you're always better off waiting. The fire shield is so important in this stage and it's just not worth risking it. That being said, if you do lose it, there are a couple of, couple of backups and I'll point them out as they come up. There's the first one up in the top left. Uh, okay, as soon as you open this door, uh, there's a platform coming up just here. And if you have just gotten to this point, this platform is almost always around halfway blocking this corridor and moving upwards, which means 
that if you try and jump from back here and get straight through, one of two things are going to happen. Firstly, either you're going to end up up against the wall, or you're going to get in this gap and be killed immediately as soon as you stand up. Uh, neither of those are good results. So, it's always worth just waiting this one out. If you get here and it's right down at the bottom, then sure, go. But, more often than not, this is what you're going to see. Uh, and then, as it moves away, you don't want to be too quick through here either. Uh, because if you go a little bit earlier than this, even though this platform is moving away from the ceiling, because you take up so little space when you're, uh, vertical space, when you're gliding compared to when you're standing up, you can actually sneak through that much earlier than uh, you would you would think. And that's great until you hit the platform, stand up, and then are crushed. Um, there's no point in going that soon anyway, because you won't save any time down here. You're still waiting for this platform to move away, and look how long it takes. You have so much time before you start losing time there, so it's not even worth risking it at all. Let's just smash up here. Uh, and you can see now why the fire shield is so useful. Uh, you might have thought I could jump off this wall a little bit earlier, but what I'm trying to do is with my jump, I want to land completely on the other side of this fire breathing sprite. Uh, because if I land here, then I'll be able to jump immediately. If I land here and then run onto the the ground, it uh, sometimes the jump doesn't come out as early as you need it to. So you need to jump immediately once you get there. Uh, I need to hit this switch to open the next door, and the the other backup fire shield is just over here on the other side of this checkpoint. Um, again, same as same as earlier, you actually want to try and skip this um, fire breathing sprite and land next to it. Uh, it's a it's tricky to make though, and so I missed it there. So you carry a bit of momentum onwards. Uh, so stop. Uh, here, what you want to do? Spin Nash, don't hold anything off that ramp, and that lets you go, it sends you straight up and into the corner of this ramp. Once you get to about there, you want to jump out, and that sends you away to here. This platform should be open if you've done everything right up to that point. Uh, then get another couple of Spin Nashes away. Here, this, this one I made a bit of a mistake. There's a couple of different ways you can handle this. So the first one, which is what I was trying to do, is uh, jump out of the ramp a little higher than that so that you can glide onto one of these two platforms up above, depending on how good your jump is. Uh, the one I ended up going back to, uh, very similar to the one earlier, you just spin dash up there, hold nothing, and you get attached to this uh, ceiling one. You can actually get put all the way over to there if you've got enough speed. Anyway, it ended up not mattering because of this here. So when you stand on uh, this platform, you can see there are two platforms above you. And they move in a cycle from here over to there and back to here again. Uh, now just as these platforms start moving left, you want to jump out to here, and that, you can see the platform there, uh, that opens up for you, just as they start to move left, land on the spring, not long to go now, just glide over this gap, and a couple more jumps just to get to the end of here, this is the end of Knuckles area. Uh, all you got to do here, this is only one. This is only one stop and spin dash, really. So you uh, you come into that with momentum, and you get control back about as you go across that line. So you want to hold left, so that you stop about there. Uh, tap right to make sure you're still facing right. Charge the spin dash. Jump in the corridor. Carry on out this way, and then just hold right until. 
you see the teleporter appear on screen. Do a light jump and glide just as you go over the top of it and you stop dead on it. And that takes you straight to the final boss. And that's Lava Reef and Hidden Palace. So let's watch that again without any interruptions.